my earliest memory of what you might call ahimsa was what my grandmother taught me. Don't hurt anybody, what my father lived his life doing. Make people feel happy and in other people's happiness, feel happiness. I stumbled, literally stumbled upon a man uh, called Fateh Singh Rathor in, in um, Ranthambore. And between him and Kailash Sankhla, uh, so many things happened where he said that, look, do you realize it wasn't just the Maharajas and the British who were killing the tiger? We are killing the tiger. We are cutting its forests. We are doing this, we are doing that. And something clicked and then my life changed. In nature, there is no violence as violence we know. Human beings are the only ones who know how to create violence for the sake of creating violence, you know. Um, I, I think Jungle Raj, I would love to have Jungle Raj back again in the world, not just in India, because in the jungle, irrespective of anything, there are certain rules and laws which are not enforced in terms of incarceration and punishment and judgment. They're life and death. You obey or you die. This, I mean, it was said by Darwin and it was said by Gandhi and it was said by everybody that, look, flow with the tide of nature and everything would be all right. I think that at this moment in time, the complexities are, are truly, truly almost, um, you can't untangle them, you know, because I believe that we human beings, we imagine we are the gods we invented now, you know. For me, truly, that argument with my grandmother still takes place. That tiger you see behind me is not a tiger, he's just a metaphor for all of Kudrat. And I feel that the violence of shooting a tiger is a lesser violence than the violence of taking away an entire forest. So when you say forest, it's not just, oh, how beautiful the tiger is, how lovely. The, the fact is that our people knew you cannot go right now to any place anywhere in India where there is a water stream or a river as wide as, let's say, 30, 35 feet without finding at its source a temple. Now that temple is not like Ankleshwar. The temple is sometimes just an assembly of rocks, some evidence of something that was left over there in prayer. We worshipped nature. We worshipped nature in all its avatars, you know. We worshipped the sun rising, we worshipped the moon, we worshipped the clouds, we worshipped the wind, Pavan, we worshipped the waters, every river, Narmada, Maya, Ganga, Ma. You know, we, were, we worshipped everything. I don't know what happened, but somewhere down the line, and it wasn't just at independence and before independence, it was even before that. The erosion had started, where instead of a source of life, all the things that we see around us became resources for life, tradable resources. I think that that attitude, it represents violence in its worst form. I'm not saying that we should sit down over there like plants turn green and by photosynthesis we survive. We are animals. The law of the jungle is eat or be eaten. But the law of the jungle is not kill everything that you don't eat. You know, the Narmada Bachao Andolan woke the world up. It chose non-violence because from its visceral origins, it realized that violence begets violence. I could subdue you now by getting a crowbar and coming into your house, but that's not going to endear you to me. And life is not one moment of anger. Life is a whole lifetime of living in one form or the other. You know, what are we? We are just bumped up monkeys, you know. And we live essentially in troops. We live as a community. We live as a family. We live as a village. And in every village, in every house, in every family, you will find people who khatpat to hoti hai Lekin if that khatpat turns into violence, which is either psychological, emotional or physical, then you are broken, you have broken rules. Those rules essentially are that if you surround yourself with unhappiness, you cannot as an island live a happy life within. When Project Tiger was declared, at that point, like a steamroller, people were moved out of their homes to keep the tiger alive. The tiger had been virtually wiped out. 
and a very cold decision was taken and the people who paid the ultimate price the only people who paid the real price were the people living in that forest and around that forest if i had if i had a time machine i would go back and make reparations for that the biosphere just gives you warnings and then it gives you consequences and the floods and droughts that we see today these are a direct result and the pandemic is a direct result of our ignorance arrogance avarice apathy you know and our inability to come together here is for you an adult literacy program each one teach one every child teach an adult what the real priorities in life are sitting above the tiger's head somewhere gandhi ji is saying the same thing for those who have ears let them listen join hands join hands you'll be stronger separate you are giving everybody who wants to destroy life on earth a gift